Craig Singleton, China expert at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, claims that it might be time for Canada to come up with a new strategy to handle Beijing's hostage diplomacy, as there's a lot more at stake here than just the fate of the two Michaels. Mr. Singleton joins us now on Forum Daily. Welcome back to the show, sir. Thanks, Nima. So why does Canada need to change its method of handling Beijing's use of hostage diplomacy? So when we say hostage diplomacy, we're talking about the taking of hostages for diplomatic purposes. So sadly, this is an asymmetric tool that some countries like Russia, Cuba, and Iran use to gain leverage over democratic countries like the United States and Canada. What's clear in the case of the two Michaels is that Canada's efforts to resolve this issue through quiet diplomacy have been unsuccessful and neither man is any closer to regaining their freedom now than they were when they were first arrested several hundred days ago. So what's at risk here, Mr. Singleton? You claim that there's a lot more at stake than the fate of the two Michaels. But China's recent actions fit into a much broader pattern of belligerent behavior that encompass everything from trade and technology to human rights and even the search for a COVID-19 vaccine. So at their core, what we're seeing is a little bit of an evolution of China's wolf warrior diplomacy, which is all about intimidating potential international rivals and shoring up domestic support for Chinese President Xi Jinping. The rules-based international order only works when all the players are willing to play by the rules. So if China is willing to arbitrarily detain uh, foreign nationals for no reason, if they're willing to flout international law, the sky is sort of the limit in terms of different ways that China can exert pressure on the West and sort of change our way of life. So what would a new and improved strategy to combat this hostage diplomacy look like, Mr. Singleton? Well, for far too long, individual countries have tried to resolve these issues on their own. That was certainly the case in the United States as we were attempting to resolve trade disputes with, with China. Uh, and while we can't ignore uh, China's economic clout, there is something to be said here for strength in numbers. And on this front, the West is very well positioned to combine resources to take on China, which actually has very few allies. Yeah, actually, to build on that, Mr. Singleton, in a recent report, you mentioned that Canada should unite with its G7 partners to deal with this issue. Why is that a good idea? The G7 sits perfectly at the intersection of geoeconomics and Western values. So these like-minded democratic countries, they already have existing partnerships to deal with things like diplomacy, economics, and intelligence sharing, that when they're combined, they're a truly formidable force. What was lacking for the longest time was the political will to take on China, but that sentiment has obviously changed in response to Chinese security crackdowns in places like Hong Kong and China's mishandling of the COVID-19 epidemic. So what would a united G7 approach against hostage diplomacy in China look like? Well, the West can't fall prey to the idea that China is somehow 10 feet tall. There's been recent polling also that shows that global perspectives and attitudes towards China have fallen dramatically and taken a nosedive in the last few months. On the specific issue of human rights and exit bans, the G7 needs to get together and reach a consensus on China and on this issue. And then they need to collectively raise these issues head on with China. They also need to leverage their ties to international organizations like the World Trade Organization, the International Court of Justice to impose additional costs. It's far beyond what Canada was doing before in terms of quiet diplomacy. But the reality is that Canada is very well positioned to lead on these issues internationally because Ottawa has always invested in constructive multilateralism in the past. And I really want to get into the case of the two Michaels. They've been detained for nearly two years now. What immediate steps should our federal government take to bring them back home? And sir, we've got about 30 seconds left. In addition to calling for that urgent meeting of the G7, the Canadian government really needs to start engaging constructively with the private sector and start to develop contingency plans in the event that Canadian citizens are arbitrarily arrested. On the issue of the two Michaels in particular, the reality is that the court case involving the Chinese CFO will largely determine their fate. But coming up on 1 December, we kick off Human Rights Awareness Month around the world. This is a tremendous opportunity to raise public awareness and to increase pressure on Beijing about the two Michaels. All right, sir. Thank you again for your expertise on this issue. Thank you.